Wandering Dan, the biblical roots of the Irish, Welsh, and related peoples. An important group of sailors and colonists throughout the Mediterranean and Atlantic seaboard in ancient times were the Tuatha de Danann. Although historians know all too little about them, these ancient sea peoples are well represented in the histories of Egypt, Palestine, Greece, Italy, Spain, the British Isles, and Denmark. Scholars have been divided through the years on whether these ancient mariners had any connection with the biblical tribe of Dan, especially since the word Tuath means tribe. However, a popular alternative theory is that the name Tuatha de Danann actually means people of the goddess Dana or Danu. This, we are told, proves that these people had nothing to do with the biblical Israelite tribe of Dan. A divine being with a similar name is found both in Ireland in the west and in India in the east. For example, in India, it is interesting that in the Rig Veda, a goddess Danu appears as a minor figure, although certainly not one of the main divinities of Hinduism. The Rig Veda had a long history of compilation going back to 1500 BC or earlier, although final alterations were not completed until about 600 BC. Similarly, in Irish history, a mythical being with a name variously written as Dana, Danu, Danona, or Don is found in writings such as the Libor Gabala, the Book of the Conquests of Ireland, a book of tales compiled between the 9th and 12th centuries AD. She is variously said to be either the mother of all of the Tuatha de Danann or mother of the leader of that people. In addition, she was the mother of all the gods, a very important entity. She, however, was said to be a he, Donus or Danuvius in Roman mythology. The Irish myths are full of fantastical legends filled with confusion and contradiction concerning their early history. For example, the Tuatha de Danann were said to be deities in the Ulster cycle of Irish tales, but in the Fenian cycle were fairy folk or leprechauns who now inhabit invisible homes deep inside the earth. This much is recognized. The Tuatha de Danann were a literal people who sailed to Ireland from somewhere in the east. Scholars also seem to agree that the Irish Dana or Danu represent a literal human ancestor who was later deified and turned into a fairy or goddess. Many scholars also believe that there is some unknown connection between these Irish and Indian deities. The important questions therefore are, firstly, who was the original human or eponymous ancestor of the Tuatha de Danann? Secondly, how and why did his or her descendants travel to such far opposite lands as India and Ireland in ancient times? Thirdly, in what land did this ancestor and his or her descendants originate? Scholars have not been able to definitively answer these questions, nor to agree on a probable answer. Let us propose that the Tuatha de Danann were in fact the biblical tribe of Dan, as several modern leading scholars believe. There are certainly some interesting similarities. The Irish Tuatha de Danann were said to be wise ones endowed with great wisdom. The Hebrew word Dan means judge, and scholars believe that the actual meaning is that this tribe was considered wise and fair, pointing out that the Hebrew court system was never centered on Dan as literal judges. The Tuatha de Danann and or the Irish Milesians are associated with a sacred banner with a coiled serpent and the rod of Moses, according to Irish historian A.M. Sullivan in The Story of Ireland, page 12. Dr. Avraham Baran says, the snake figures prominently in the Bible during the wanderings of the Israelites in the desert of Sinai, as in Numbers 21, verse 9. A bronze snake was kept in the temple of Jerusalem for many centuries until in the days of King Hezekiah, 2 Kings 18, verse 4. That's from Biblical Dan of the Israel Exploration Society, Hebrew Union College, 1994, page 177. The Tuatha de Danann were also associated in legend with stone cairns and mounds. The location of Biblical Tel Dan today is Tel El Quadi in Arabic, uh, Mound of the Judge, at the foot of Mount Hermon on one of the sources of the Jordan River. It is an artificial mound 18 meters above the surrounding plain. Benjamin Mazar and W.F. Albright stated that Tel Dan was one of the 
quote, earliest cities of the ancient Middle East sheltering behind earthen ramparts, unquote. In the middle of the mound was a monumental stone structure about six and a half meters wide that served as the core for the huge embankment, according to Avram Baran, page 23. An even more significant connection existed between the biblical tribe and the Tuatha de Danan, as detailed in the book The Story of Celto-Saxon Israel by W. H. Bennett, available at links from our website. Uh, he says, quote, a fascinating connection exists between the Greek Hercules and the biblical Samson. The Hebrew Samson was born of the tribe of Dan, Judges 13, verses 2 through 25. Greek history tells us that a people called Denoi, or Danan, came to trade and colonize in Greece in ancient times, settling in a region called Argos. The word Hercules in Greek is Heracles, which is virtually identical with the Hebrew plural word for traitors, Heraclem. And Heracles, or Hercules, is said to have come from Argos himself. The Greek myths tell that the Danioi were descended from a patriarch, Danios, who was the son of Bela and sailed from Egypt. In the Bible, the Hebrew patriarch, Dan, was the son of the concubine, Bilha, Genesis 30, verses 3 through 6, and the Israelites were in Egypt at the time that Danos set sail to Greece from there. The original Hebrew historical ancestress, Bilha, mother of Dan, can also be seen in Welsh mythology, where she has been turned into Beli, the consort of Don, and parents of the children of light. This again is Hebrew biblical terminology found in places such as 1 Kings 11.36. Was the biblical tribe of Dan large enough and capable enough to have sailed and settled throughout the Mediterranean and beyond? Dr. Mark Bertush has written, Dan, too, was at the time of the composition of this poem, Judges 5, from earlier traditions, a significant group. From his book, Understanding Dan, an exegetical study of a biblical city, tribe, and ancestor. Uh, page 33. Similarly, Professor Avraham Baran stated, some suggest that Dan had become an insignificant tribe in Israel since only the shortest possible list of descendants, a single son or clan, is preserved for its eponymous ancestor, Genesis 46 and Numbers 26. Yet according to the census figures in the book of Numbers, the tribe of Dan was second in size only to Judah. But was the biblical tribe involved in seafaring? Again, Dr. Avraham Baram says, the tribes of Dan and Asher are situated along the Mediterranean and are associated with maritime ventures. Judges 5.17 says, and why did Dan remain in ships? Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his breaches. Dr. Baran says that Dan had extra Israelite economic relationships page 136. These were apparently overseas. The events of Judges chapter 5 with the tribe of Dan turning to the sea are dated to the 13th century BC. Noted Professor W. H. Albright similarly dates the eruption of the Sea Peoples towards the end of the 13th century. It began circa 1225 BC. He says in his book, The Bible and the Ancient Near East, page 337. In fact, the biblical tribe has been definitely associated with the Danan Sea Peoples. Speaking of archaeological work at Tel Dan, Dr. Itamar Singer of Tel Aviv University says, the excavator attributed this 11th century grave to the Danites, one of the Sea Peoples who allegedly settled on this coastal strip. Dr. Johanna C. DeMoor also discussed the basic possibility of such a friendly connection between early Israel and certain sea peoples, he says, would seem to be demonstrated. DeMoor adds, it points to a historical association of the proto-Israelites with certain sea peoples. Other leading scholars who link the Tuatha de Danan with the biblical Israelites include Cyrus Gordon, M.C. Astur, and Yigel Yadin. M.C. Astur, in his Hello Semitica, an ethnic and cultural study in West Semitic impact on Mycenaean Greek, uh, and uh, Dan, why they remain in ships. Judges 5.17 are some of the sources of information on this. 
That the Israelites had access to the Mediterranean Sea is verified by Dr. Baruch Halpern, Heidelberg and Penn State Universities, who states, 1 Kings 4.11 places the coastlands of Dor in Solomon's hands, and it is the assumption of 1 Kings 5.23 that there were secure ports under Solomon's control. Why would the tribe of Dan leave Canaan and Palestine for other lands? Judges 18.1 tells us, About this time the tribe of Dan was looking for a place to live. The other tribes had land, but the people of Dan did not really have any to call their own. It is interesting that this large tribe seems to have disappeared completely from Palestine and is left completely out of the listing of tribes in the book of Revelation, chapter 7. Is there then an ethnic connection between the biblical Israelites and northwestern European peoples such as the Irish and Danes? Scholarly genetic DNA research confirms this. Quote, Middle Eastern populations generally connect much closer to typical Northwest European DNA samples such as the Irish and Danes. Unquote from the book Nuclear Genetic Variation of European Populations in a Global Context in Archaeogenetics, DNA, and the Population Prehistory of Europe, University of Cambridge, published in the year 2000. What is the possible connection with India? It is well known that the ten tribes of the House of Israel were taken into Assyrian captivity in the early 8th century BC, and some of them traveled eastward into Iran, Afghanistan, and surrounding regions. The Rigveda was composed in northwest India, not far from known locations of dispersed Israelites. In this short article, we have only been able to briefly discuss this interesting topic. The migrations of the tribe of Dan are described in more complete detail with maps, illustrations, and quotations of noted authorities in the book The Story of Celto-Saxon Israel. Find links for this book on our website. Thanks for watching.